are in the sunroom. It's not sunny, it's rainy as per usual July in the west of Ireland. And Tom, we have the second batch of, well, third batch of strawberries ripening. They are the outdoor ones. They're mainly the ones that are in that old bin. <laughs> Tom made holes all through it and uh, yeah. So I have one here left at the minute and the doggies were very interested because they love strawberries as well. But I thought we'd do a little knit and chat. Just having some ground coffee from somewhere. Lovely little mug from um, Ardmore Pottery in County Waterford, which is right on the coast. And there are a couple little pottery places there. Um, really, really lovely, especially for those of you like, well now I haven't been in a few years, but I imagine it's still kind of the same. There's a lot of really happy colors. Well, what I call, I mean, people could call any color happy, really. It's all very personal, but sort of like, you know, vibrant, vibrant. Oh, sorry, that might have been annoying. Or some people might like it, AMSR. Um, yes. So anyhow, yeah, do check it out. It's a lovely little place to go. It's right near the border with Cork, with East Cork. And um, it's on the coast. It's a lovely little uh, village. And it's, it's really quite enjoyable, especially if you love sort of ceramics. And I absolutely do. I used to have a lot, of, lot more of sort of mugs and things. But since we moved into the cottage, um, I have to be, I've had to curate my collection and try not to go overboard because there's just not room at the present time. We hope maybe in a few years to do a little extension, which will still, the cottage will still be small, but we hope to make the kitchen a bit bigger as in so it's not the kitchen living room no room for a dining table situation that we are in now um yeah yeah it's fine but uh when some one of the couple me is pretty much neurotypical and also likes to have some items like i'm not i don't think i'm a hoarder except maybe a, i well i don't hoard it but i have a lot of yarn and fiber because that's what that's what I do like we don't go out to eat or do things like that hardly ever um, so yeah anyways and uh, Tom is a collector of guitars inexpensive guitars that he then fixes up and makes fancy so there is not a lot of room but so one of us tends to have more things than the other which would be me and Tom being on the autistic spectrum he's or Asperger's as you may know it is one of his things is he really likes a lot of space. <laughs> well, there's not a lot of physical space and he also likes space and he can't really see things if it's cluttered. So like we have a lot of, you know, those cubby shelves and he literally needs to have like one thing in there. So he, of his things that he needs to find. So it is, we are compromising. We are learning from each other all the time. So, um, yeah, so that's a challenge when you start off with a very small space. I mean, the cottage would qualify, I think, as a tiny house. Um, uh, yeah, so I could fit about 20 things in the space where he would fit maybe one or two. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, anyways, I don't know. Oh, I was talking about Ardmore Pottery. And I think, so there's Ardmore Pottery, and I think there's some other potteries there as well, if I'm remembering correctly. And there's little, you know, craft shops. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a, a sea walk along the cliffs. And of course there's ruins and it's really, it's really nice. It can be quite crowded in the summer touristy months because it's sort of the main part of the village. It's just like one road uh, through that. Um, and there, there wouldn't be a whole lot of parking Anyways, it's been a few years since I've been, so, but I do recommend. Okay, so what I am doing now is I'm going to eat my strawberry. Did I show you? So this is my strawberry here. I'm going to eat that and drink some coffee, and I'm going to work on my Wilfrida. Oops, there it goes. So I have this, I love this pattern. So I was watching, I think the first person I saw knitting it was, Anne at my North Knit Corner and she's in Norway and she was knitting it and she was using some of her yarns I think from it was from a Christmas 
uh, countdown calendar that she had and it was called in Christmas we wear pink or something like that so it was all these sort of pinks which I love well there's not too many colors I I don't really enjoy in one form or another uh, but I really like the way she did it and she did it as a fade and the lace pattern on top was lighter and then it faded down and I just for some reason I thought that was great then I saw Brit on Brit it's a Norwegian podcast that she is now also podcasting in English and I highly recommend her as well so that's Anne of North Knit my North Knit Corner Brit of Brit Stricken Nerd which means Brit uh, Knitting Nerd in Norwegian and she I think her English podcast is it's on that channel but she titles it Knitting at the Seaside Farm I love it like she is they live on this little island uh, called Froya or maybe it's a bigger island uh, Froya and uh, you know along the Norwegian coast where there's all these lovely little groups of islands and they have a sheep breed that is a traditional old old sheep breed called I think Villa Ul? I think it means and it, whatever the word is in Norwegian it kind of means like wild sheep and so they have small batch yarns and all sorts of wonderful things sorry I'm just looking at there because a young robin has just landed and you can tell the young robins this is the European robin because they they don't have the red on their breast first and it slowly kind of comes in so when you see a little mottled looking bird like on the chest is kind of mottled in sort of beige and browny gray uh, but it acts like a robin it, you know everything else says robin that's probably a young robin and then when you see that same bird starting to get a bit of the red breast coming through that's when the robin is growing older so I was just looking at that and squirrel bird it's usually for me bird or oh something is shiny um but so here yeah oh i wasn't quite done with my story so brit stricken nerd and then also um there's another uh, i think she's either norwegian or s s podcasting for from norway or sweden my i can't remember i'll put it on i will put it on the screen and she knits several of them and she's knit many lovely things as well and she's podcasting in english so between those three women, I was like, I really want to knit this. And I just have to do the sleeves. So I knit the top bit in, I don't have the tags, but I will find it and put it on the screen and also in the drop down description box. So the Hobie yarn, uh, this is the unicorn solid. And every so often throughout the year, they'll put it on sale. And it was on sale so that this is their, excuse me, this is their hand dyed um, selection unicorn. They have unicorn, you know, that's typical uh, hand dyed is all the different colors. And then they have some solids and it, this, the solids went on sale for about 10 euros. And then of course I did the Hobie bingo, got an extra discount code that I could apply for the 48 hours. So I applied that. So, I mean, maybe this was on sale for 11 euros and then I think I had 10%. So I got it for 10 euros. So I got this and I don't remember the color and I, I paired it with a drops. This one matched really nice. So that gives you this top bit. And I really wanted to use this special yarn, which is from a knitter's homestead from River. And this, uh, I talked about her on my mini, Mary, mini, Mary, Mary, mini Mal 23, um, video, because I'm using some of her minis for the Soliolo top. But I had 100 gram skeins, naturally dyed. I think both of these colorways may be called Flamingo, but this was a Merino signal singles. And then this is her mohair and silk. And it's it's showing up pretty true. So it's kind of like, you know, a mauve color, a pinky lavender. And I wanted something that would be a bit lighter, but still go. and. I think that went really well. So I will show you the finished, not finished, the so far. So right along here, I brought in the uh, the flamingo colorway and I still, but I held it with this mohair. Um, maybe I would have done it, a, I'm not sure, should I do it a little bit longer or not? When this is on, it just looks really nice because the way it falls, it just, 
it really accentuates the stitch work. I actually missed like a couple rounds in the pattern. So mine of the cable, because it was one of those things where it says rows 12 through 15, do knit two together, cable over, blah, blah, blah. And I just read it as one line, if you see. Like, so I read, okay, row 12, I do this. And then I just went to the next instruction. I didn't twig that it was rows 12 through 15. So my last cable's a little short, but it's fine. And then I brought in Rivers, the Knitter's Homestead yarns. And you can see it's so lovely. And also you can see that I've done something different. So I've done a modification that I've been messing with this is my third one. I'm adding like rough, no, I don't know if it's ruffles. Is it called a peplum? If it's anywhere in the garment, I don't know. But I'm adding uh, knit, uh, knit front and back and throughout it to just have it kind of ruch here or flow a little bit because um, my belly has gotten fluffier. And sometimes I don't want something so tight on there or but I want it to be fitted up here like actually this tank car is like that this is my first one when I was just still practicing with it and this garment stretched a lot longer than I thought it would it grew um, because of the bamboo in it I think as well as the merino and the silk so but I wanted it more fitted along here and then flow outwards and I have a little video I'll probably stick that in here this is a make I finished a wee while ago, but you haven't seen it yet. It's Modified Tank RT by Ananina Yuti, um, who is Ananina Knits here on YouTube. And I was one of the test knitters, so I've already made one version which I had podcast about. This pattern is out now. This one I modified. But, so it has the, um, you know, the garter front here. Sorry, that's the ribbing. This is the garter front here that has short rows in the front and the back for shaping. So I did all that as per pattern. Um, I do have a Ravelry page for this, which I will put below. I think I, I did a smaller size than I did last time. So I believe this is a size two or three, I can't remember. The yarn is from Irish Dyer, Irish Artisan Yarn, the color Wayla Hinch, which is a beach near us actually, here in County Clare. It's like 65 superwash merino, I think 25% bamboo, and then either silk or nylon. So I never knit with something with bamboo before, so I wasn't certain how much it was going to stretch. So it's knit flat for the front and back, and then you join in the round and you knit away. Uh, no problem at all. You seam the shoulders up here, really quite easy. I just use mattress stitch. And so I knit it all to pattern to here. And then what I wanted to do for this part is I wanted to try, I guess it's called peplum. Is it called peplum when it's anywhere or just when it's here? I don't know. But you know, like roughly, because I know that that is a shape or a look that flatters me. I mean, I'm wider in here. And let's just for a minute, let's just talk about bellies. Okay, so particularly as one gets older past the menopause, the belly and women, we can really put on the fat around the belly area. And that certainly has been the case with me. And particularly when I'm not doing well and I can't move around a whole lot. So I have extra belly, fluffy belly here that can, because the way my back goes in as well, it can poke out kind of as much as my breast nearly because of the sway back that I have from the scoliosis. So I, sometimes I don't mind, you know, I have something fitted all the way down, but a lot of times I like something that actually fits me here because I have more of, um, square shoulders so to have the attention brought along here is nice so that's why I like this little bit of garter and when I did my first one this was all red and then this was white so I like that and I like to have it fitted along here but sometimes I like it to be more loose here and that looks nice so I just experimented I'd never done this before I wanted to make gathers or whatever so what I did was in the very middle 
I did uh, every, I did like a knit one, knit back and front to increase through here. So well, let's just say, so I was knitting around and say if this was the beginning around, I knit some stitches, just regular knit one, and then I would knit back and front to increase one, and then maybe I did like, I knit five plain, because what I was trying to do was create small ruffles through here and then more of the gather here, because I didn't necessarily want a bunch of extra fabric here, because I actually, you know, my waist does go in there, but I just wanted it to skim, probably, I wanted it to skim over that. Um, you know, and if you don't care about it skimming over that, that's great. Sometimes I don't. But yeah, so I wanted it to skim over that. But I also didn't want extra here. I don't need extra there. So I only did it at the front. And so this was the first time I'd ever done this. I've done it twice since then. And I'll show you those in another uh, video. Uh, and I realized that just um, like the knit one knit front and back increase through here. It didn't really create, well, it, it's not bad, but it didn't quite create the amount of ruffle that I wanted. And then also when I washed this, it did stretch more, you know, it did become more loose anyways, but I really love it. I've been wearing it loads, been wearing it loads. So I've been experimenting with doing this. Is this a peplum? If you, if you know, you can let me know. Uh, this sort of thing here and trying to raise them up even a bit more. So I've done two other garments with this, which I'll show you another time. So yeah, so I'm really happy with this. What I tend to knit is about uh, 10 inches, between 10 and 11 inches, uh, or 11 and a half inches under my underarm. So there's my hip bone, my high hip bone. I kind of, my favorite place is right there. And there's my belly button. <laughs> Tom's laughing at me. Why are you laughing? Because I'm showing my belly on the internet? Mm -hmm. Well, I might edit some of that out. But yeah, so this one is a little bit longer. It's kind of gone, sort of, yeah. That's my lower hip bone. So this one ended up being a bit lower. But um, yeah, so that's what I did. I like this yarn. It is soft, so I do see a little bit of pilling. I've also been using it, wearing it a lot, but that's okay. I can shave it. But um, yeah, the, I think it's the bamboo and the bit of silk, I believe. It's given it a lovely drape. It's really sw swingy, perfect for our Irish summer when it's uh, not having the heat wave. Um, but yeah, so I highly, highly recommend this pattern. Uh, the Tank RT by Anna Nina Uti. And it, like, I've adapted like this. I think it works really well. And I've also tested her Lotus Lake Tea. Now, as it was a test, I didn't do the modifications. And it's got lace at the bottom. That's really nice. I will go into detail about that and show you that in another video. So definitely check that out. It's really, really beautiful. It's another really great pattern. So um, yeah, definitely follow Anna Nina if you haven't already. And each time I'm kind of refining my technique, like, like maybe making uh, two knit two togethers in a row, then the knit one through here where I want the most flowiness. And this one I did that bit more. And it actually, well, we'll see once I wash and block it, but it, the, the ruffle seems to start about here. So then when it stretches out, it should start there. So it's a little bit closer to the bust line. The bust line will be snug, maybe with, pos uh, you know, zero positive ease, maybe, I don't know, or one inch of positive ease, and then it'll flow out. Um, so that's the plan. Now, because I only have a bit of this left, I've weighed this, I'll have to wait again because I forgot. And I will only probably be able to do, you know, I'm not sure how long the sleeve will go. Will it be um, a short sleeve or sort of a mid to here sleeve? I'm not certain, but I will just keep weighing as I knit so that when I get to one half, I'll do the other. So I just have to do the sleeves and then I'll be done. But I, I run hot, so to have short sleeved garments that are otherwise funny, fuzzy, <laughs> Uh, and warm is perfectly fine with me like for because actually 
I'm already hot. Yeah. yeah, so this is the Wilfrida. It's a really nice pattern. It's at a loose gauge. It goes very quickly. Um, people, a lot of people have been comparing it to like the Ranunculus in that, you know, it's sort of easy breezy to do and you can modify um, what you would like to do. I think I am doing, it's either the size one or two and, and that's because my upper bust is actually about 36 inches and I've just been reading a lot more about how like you want it to to fit your upper bust. So I'm going down, so like my full bust here is about 39 inches. That's with my bra on because I wear things with a bra, so I just measure it with the bra. I've only been knitting the jumpers really for about a year and a bit. Um, yeah, I haven't been knitting tops or garments for very long. And I've just been learning. First, I just knit a bunch of ranunculus because I really enjoyed it. And after I knit the first, it was so fun. And then I was confident and I could get uh, the ranunculus with one skein of fingering weight yarn generally. So I have a lot of those single skeins and that was great. I think I'm a tiny bit long waisted, even though I'm like short <laughs> at about probably just a little over five one. Uh, so anyway, so to get back to my point was that, so I'm learning about what in general I actually enjoy on me. I enjoy wearing, I like the look of. Now I like a lot of different looks, uh, but this is the one I'm exploring now where it's kind of fluffy in the front. I just want a little bit of flowy at the front and it's just, cause I like that. Anyway, so that's this jumper. That's what I think I'm going to work on today. Um, yeah, so that was a small bit of knit and chat. Let me turn you around. So, let's see, can I zoom you? There's some of the garden plants. And so, a lot of the dahlias are flowering over there by the barn. And here we have a lot of uh, squash that were volunteers in this bed. You can see that is a parsley. So I have some petunias and parsley and thyme growing in there. But in the compost, our homemade compost, some of the squash seeds from last year survived. So I've just let them go to see what, what they're going to produce. It could be a mix that we can't really eat, but it's just fun. So yeah, and then we have a whole lot, as you've seen, throughout the place a lot of lilies blooming and they all are scented so when you go out there it's absolutely amazing so yeah but behind us here we have oops we have a lot of stuff like some of our christmas things because our guest room is now where our uh, not our my <laughs> tom's son my stepson is um going to be living for a few weeks or months or who knows uh, till he gets his own place sorted he's relocated from Cork and so that's really nice and he's an he's an adult so uh, he's gonna be a he could be a nice big help and he's taking the doggies for walks and stuff and so that's really great and so it's really nice to have him here so that's fun uh, but that was a lot of jiggery pokery and moving things around and that's very hard for Tom with his Asperger's like change like that is very unsettling for him so we've been doing it bit by bit and yeah so it's it's gonna be fine um, might do a little bit jiggery pokery in my craft room uh, to to again to just make more space for my stepson in his room which is the smallest room in the place but we have to wait for that because Tom needs to settle. So we'll see. And that's something I'm learning to do because, like, I just get excited and I want to do it right away. And I love organizing. Like, I would, I am a person that, left to my own devices, I rearrange things often. <laughs> and it's, that's not a good thing for Tom at all. So, yeah. That is something that we we were always doing a dance with but um yeah so that's about it i'm gonna do some knitting at the moment 
going to put my sleeves on the needles and yeah, hopefully next time you see that jumper, it will be on me and it's so lovely and soft. So, okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed the little knit and chat. Today is Sunday. It is I, like the 20 or the 30th maybe of July. So I want to get that jumper done by July and also my Stephen West socks done. I'm nearly done with those. I've got one done and then I just have, you know, about that much left of the second and then I'll show you those as well. And I had, I did a birthday cast on it. It's already done and it's super special. I love it. And I'll show you that in the podcast. Okay, friends. Have a lovely week and uh, take care with love from Wild Cottage.